ICS specific training really drives the difference between traditional IT training, which is core and essential to a number of technologists' careers, but then understanding the cyber physical components in the kinetic world and how those things differ. The way we support and manage and maintain, the way we design and engineer these systems from an OT and ICS perspective is so unique. How we operate, how we respond, it's essential that you receive training unique to those types of technologies. A very common question that we receive whenever we go out and talk to uh, different businesses, different critical infrastructure or leaders around the world is looking at kind of this technology stack of what is industrial control systems and operational technology and how is it different than information technology? And can't we just look at all of it as technology? But when you look at the way we do work in operational technology or industrial control systems, you start to identify the differences between a traditional information technology where you have data, very, very data centric. So data in use as it's sitting in an endpoint in memory or in processor space, data in motion as it moves across a network perimeters and firewalls, and data at rest as it sits in a storage or a database or a file system. When you pivot over and you look to operational technology, we're no longer data centric. We, we add the physics or kinetic element, meaning it's a signal or it's communication or it's data that does something or represents something. So it's telling you the state of something in the field or in a process, or it allows you to manipulate it and change it and alter it. Do we want to keep a system up and 100% available if we can't guarantee the integrity of that system? Do we want to keep producing a pharmaceutical product if we believe it's been manipulated? Do we want to continue to operate an electric system if we know an adversary is in that system and could potentially be misusing it? You should look to IT as the information technology side of how you manage, how you run your business, how you sort of communicate with your customers, handle billing and all the back office. And you should look to the OT side as why you're a business and understand those two things when you're considering budgeting and prioritization of resources. Cybersecurity is becoming a really, really important thing in this space. And we're one of the first areas around the country that is doing it. So where do people go for information? National kind of uh, adversarial threats have changed dramatically. Where do we think we need to have significant movement to get ahead of where adversaries are? If you look at just manufacturing and you see kind of the threats and risks that they're facing and you see where they are right now from a cybersecurity capability perspective there's a number of things that we could spend time to try to bring everybody up to where we know they should be you could do the same with rail you could do the same with chemical as countries look at the problems and challenges that they face with critical infrastructure and they consider sort of where government and asset owners uh, overlap and where some of the interests uh, collide they look to regulation in many places. As you look to the United States and you look to North America broadly, there's unique specific regulation to sectors like the electric sector and natural gas pipeline operators and water. And as you look to other places in the world and you, and you see Singapore and what they're doing with critical infrastructure more broadly across their nation, and you look to the European Union and what they're doing with NIS and NIS2, and you start to identify the regulation that is I, going after the control system specific elements of critical infrastructure. You can feel it at a SANS event. As you walk around the classes and you see all the important training that's going on, we're teaching cyber physical technology and cyber physical systems. So we need hands-on components. Our students get student kits, that is controllers that they'll find in the field and operator human machine interfaces and the, the networking and communication paths in between. And they learn it and do it all during the process of that course. The, the content needs continue to evolve. Uh, so our job and how we try to play a critical role is finding out what those, what that training is, what the evolving threats, whether it's AI, you know, a lot of ICS systems are uh, legacy. They're, they're not the most modern, and, but there's modern threats that are attacking them. So just continue to evolve the content, really focus on hands-on practice, the labs, they've built in amazing labs. Um, continue to do that. and and then offer it to as many people as we can to get this knowledge globally. As I think about the SANS ICS authors and instructors, it's something that immediately brings a smile to my face. It's um, just an amazing group of people that I just feel privileged to work with every day. This isn't a university model where I used to work in this space 10, 15 years ago, and I'm gonna tell you how it was. And now as a student, you feel like, but is that how it is? And in the area of cybersecurity, 
it's changing so frequently that the SANS model is really the only one that works where if you're not working in the field and then teaching in the class, you're already behind. You know, I think it's by getting feedback from the students, number one, and our partners. When we talk to institutions, whether they're governmental or enterprises, uh, we have courses, but we're trying to learn what they need. Are these the right solutions? Are these the right courses? Is this the right way for them to learn? And by taking that feedback, we can adapt the courseware, adapt the, the delivery systems, the modalities <clears throat> to, to help it be best for their organization. Organizations like SANS have started to identify specific job tasks and specific job roles that are essential within ICS and OT environments. And we've begun to look at credentialing and validation programs, looking to train the unique skill sets that are in high demand at an individual level. But we are also looking towards joint team training exercises and opportunities where we can learn to practice the way we play and we can work together with people of different skill sets, different job roles, and take on this incident response role from a, a diverse level. As our adversaries are building skill sets and diversity across their attack teams, we need the same things in our defense teams. We've been able to help countries from Estonia to Guam, uh, all of our allied partners. And so being a, a partner, being a place that is willing to do what is needed, that's what we have always done and want to continue to do. I would welcome you to join us for industrial control system and operational technology specific cybersecurity training. SANS is here to help you defend what makes, moves, and powers the world.